Hi everyone and welcome to the channel. Today I'm going to be creating hexagon meshes that are wrapped around spheres, but the main reason that I'm doing this is to share with you A, a new workbench, and B, a way of working with the shape binder to allow you to take your model and split out the faces rather than using something like the draft workbench to downgrade your model and lose that parametric capabilities. So I hope you're enjoying these videos and let's have a look at this technique. If you like what you're seeing, please subscribe to the site. I also have a Ko-Fi or a coffee site that you can donate to if you so desire. And that's at ko-fi.com forward slash M-A-N-G-0. I also run a Patreon where you can subscribe and get extra content. And that's at www.patreon.com forward slash mango jelly solutions. So the workbench that I'm going to be using today is the pyramids and polyhedrons. And this is available from the tools add-on manager. And if I start typing in pyramids and polyhedrons, it comes up there. When you install this workbench, what you'll get is a workbench that appears in the list here. And it's very simple. We have a number of, well, you could call them primitive objects that have been added to FreeCAD. Now they appear here. I don't see any reason why you can't actually put them, say, in the part workbench and then add them to here via the custom toolbar. Let's come over to tools and customize. And we can come down to workbenches. We've got all the workbenches in here. And we've got one here. So by rights, what we should be able to do is look at toolbars, drop this down, polyhedrons, and we can start adding in whatever we want to here. And we're in the part, we can create a new toolbar in here. And I might call this additional shapes. And we can start bringing these into this additional shapes. So we'll just use the arrow keys to pull them in there, stick a couple in there and hit close. And we've got them on our toolbar here. So we can extend the shapes in the part workbench. Just going to remove that. So tools, customize, go into the toolbars and additional shapes. And let's hit delete on that and close that and that's gone. So let's come back over to that workbench. That wasn't the thing that I wanted to show you. What I want to show you is how we can use this. And a while ago, I created a tutorial regarding hexagon meshes. And we're going to create a hexagon mesh, but in a sphere. So we've got a number of different types of pyramids and polyhedrons with this one. So we've got this one here. We just add them and change the radius to whatever we want. And we can even change the sides as well. So we can change this one to 20 and we get a different effect of whatever we want. So that's the side length. So it's the length of these sides here. So that's how the sides of eight millimeters. So we took a measurement across here this length here. Let's do that via the measure tool. If we've got it available, there it is there. And we'll measure across to there. We can see that 7.7 7 millimeters from a bit out. And you can see that's eight millimeters in length. The way I've been using this lately is let's add this one here. I'm not even gonna bother pronouncing that it's truncated version of that shape. And we've got basically a football shape here. If I wanted to create a mesh out of here, so we've got all of these shapes and you can see we've got hexagons and we've got some pentagons in here as well. So we've got this sphere of these shapes. Let's click on that and change the radius to say 10 millimeters. So what I need to do is take that and extract out these faces because I want to take these faces and extrude these. If I can extrude them over in the part workbench, so let's extrude this face here, and this isn't going to work because it's not going to set that. I can do it in the part design. We can extrude a face by just coming into part design, and we'll create that as a base feature. So we'll create a body and drag that into there as a base feature but this is the long way around if i select that face there and extrude you can see we've extrude that 
if we extrude a number of them, we can't control select them because we'll end up extruding those in the same direction as each other. We have to extrude them individually, like so. Then once we've extruded all those, we can place a sphere around here and actually remove these from the sphere. I don't want to extrude them like that. I want to take a quicker route. And there is a tool in the part design that we're going to be using. And we're going to be using this over in the part. So if I bring back my football shape, I want to select all the faces in here. I'm going to use a panel, which I haven't come into, the selection view. So on view, panels, selection view. This shows me if I control select some of these, what has been selected. And we can do searches in here. Come up to edit, and I want box element selection. And it's important, you can see the tool has changed, to drag from the top left right down to the bottom right. That selects all the faces in there. And you can see all those faces in our selection view. If I bring this around, you can see everything's been selected. Now I've got that, let's come over to part design, create subshape binder. We've now got the subshape binder attached to that shape. I'm going to press the space bar to get rid of it. So I've got rid of this original shape, just left the binder. Now, one thing that I didn't know about this binder is that we can split this apart into the individual faces. To do that, let's come over to the part workbench and select the binder. Come to part. Now the binder is an actual compound object. It's a collection of faces. Compound, slow compound. We get this exploded binder. And if I select one of these faces, you can see that all these faces have been separated out. If I click on one, press the space bar, it disappears. Let's press the space bar again to bring that back. What that allows me to do is I don't need this section view anymore, so I'm going to close that down to give myself a bit more room. I can select the first, shift select the last, selecting all those faces there, and then use the extrude. And we'll extrude it out, say, let's go for the 10 millimeters. That's extruded all those faces in the direction that's normal to their face. So straight out. What we can then do is make sure nothing's selected and a sphere. Now this sphere I'm going to set to about a millimeter larger than the original size of the football shape, which was 10, so we can set that to 11. Click on the sphere, radius to 11, hit enter. So you can see that sphere's in there, just sitting inside there. I need to join all these strews together as a compound. So I'm going to select the bottom one and shift select the top one. Selecting all those extrudes. Part, compound, make compound. So what we got now, if I shrink the exploded binder down, we've got a sphere and a compound. I'm going to select the one that I want to keep, the sphere, control select the compound. Cut to part, boolean, and cut. We've cut away that strewed from that sphere. So where it was protruding out of that sphere, it's taken that material away, but we've still got the inner material. And that's quite easy to get rid of. I can either create a new sphere, or we come into the original sphere, which is here, press the space bar, so you can see it there. And we could remove that from there, but we can see that's touching the top. That will just leave basically a face on there. So I'm just going to hide that sphere and I'm going to create a new sphere. So we can create a new sphere, click on the sphere, and we'll set the radius to something like, well, before it was 10 millimeters. That brings it out to here. So we can go 10 millimeters. Let's go 10.5. Now we select the one we want to keep, which is the cut that hexagon mesh, control click, the one we want to remove the sphere, part, boolean, cut. And now we've got 
our hexagon mesh wrap around the sphere. Remember, you can do whatever you want with this. We could say add another cube and increase the size of this. Let's go 30 by 30. And we can take that sphere, right click, transform, and place that on top of there and create a cut between those two. I've actually taken the cube, not the sphere. So I take the one we want to keep, which is the cut, control click the cube, and then create the cut between those. So we've opened the bottom of that sphere up. Because we've used a shape binder, rather than going over to somewhere like the draft workbench and using the tools in there to downgrade the shape to faces, by the time we've done that, we've lost the parametric capabilities of the object. With the shape binder, we haven't. Hope you enjoyed that video, and I hope to see you again soon. If you like what you've seen, please subscribe to the site. I also have a Ko-Fi or a coffee site that you can donate to if you so desire, and that's at ko-fi.com forward slash mang0. I also run a Patreon where you can subscribe and get extra content, and that's at www.patreon.com forward slash mango jelly solutions. Any money that's kindly donated will be used to expand the channel. Thanks a lot for watching and subscribing, and I'll see you again soon.